Hello and welcome. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna react uh, not the whole stuff, obviously the only important parts, uh, to the newly released Echoes of the Atlas content reveal video. So this is gonna be about 3.13, obviously. Uh, oh, I will also mention the changes about the Occultist and Dead Eye uh, because I already have some guides, recently guides. So we will also compare the DPS on those and see if they are actually buffs or nerfs. <laughs> So we are gonna see about that. So if you are new to my channel, if you just discovered me, uh, I have been playing this game for the five, uh, past 5 or 6 years. Uh, I started doing YouTube for the last 1 or 2 years, let's say, but I mainly focused after the COVID pandemic, you know. So my channel kept growing and growing and thanks for 1000 subscriptions, you know. And please check my channel for guides, build guides, other craft guides, all of those. And I will keep updating regularly. So thanks for watching and thanks for your uh, support. So let's start. So obviously we won't watch everything. So make sure you watch the video uh, before you <laughs> listen to my commentary. So first of all, uh, if you didn't maybe understand or maybe you are a new player, um, there are going to be two things in this 3.13. First thing is an expansion. So this is not about the league. So the thing you are watching right now is the expansion. So this is gonna be in the core game and probably that means that it is also gonna be in the standard league because this is just the um, what's that continuing to the lore something like that the last one was in 3.9 uh, with the Cirrus and conquerors you know so this is the new lore actually so this is there's gonna be a new boss called maven and let's just hop right into that so Echoes of the Atlas is the expansion actually, not the League. The League is going to be Ritual League. And we are also going to take a look at that. So first Echoes of Atlas. So this is the Maven. Let's see what they show us. So as far as I understand, uh, you will capture maybe some bosses in the maps. And then eventually fight those in an arena. Uh, the one you are currently watching. And it will get harder and harder, and eventually you will, I believe, um, kill ten bosses at a time. So this is gonna be. These are all map bosses, as far as I understand. And eventually you will um, battle the Maven herself, and then she has some um, her specific loot uh, pool, like Maven's orb. Uh, I'm not sure if um, she will drop the new Watchstones, but we are also, also uh, gonna talk about that here also. Yeah. So the first big change, Atlas Passive Trees, so we also we already have a very big and complicated talent tree, but now the Atlas also is it, but this is not complicated actually. So the first thing about this that I noticed, so they show that, so this per particular tree is about the Lenak Cairn or whatever, the Atlas region. So I first thought that you can actually take this out and put it on some other um, Atlas region. But I believe that's not the case. Uh, maybe they just want to be, you know, uh, make the atlas a dynamic because you already know that atlas gets shuffled every leak. So I believe, and uh, that's why um, these are all in a, you know, static position. So if you want to farm legions or maybe beyond, I believe Glenac Cairn is your choice in 3.13 um, leak and expansion, whatever. So yeah. Uh, so probably maybe these kind of maps, the, the maps in the Glenac Cairn, maybe are gonna be more expensive. Maybe I'm not sure, because um, if I won't miss it, there is a map device in you know map modes of Lana somewhere in the video, and I saw that there is both Beyond and Legion. So yeah, so if you, you can actually farm Legion this week by um, paying maybe seven cans, I'm not sure because uh, that was free in this video, I believe. So yeah, so some Jewish stuff uh, to even buff those uh, modes from the device or maybe you can use Scarabs. So we are not going to talk all about those but you should know that um, min-maxing your maps is even uh, more profitable. It's going to be, yeah. So I will probably do maybe Legion farms um, if there are good maps in Glenac Cairn. So we will see because Legion farm, the last I was I did was in... Uh, Delirium League, I believe, you could uh, put uh, Legion on in the map device and I farmed Summit and there's also a video in my channel, if you can find it, uh, go for it. 
and I farmed a lot of currency uh, with that legion usage, you know. So legion is actually very profitable if you can min-max and with this passive tree uh, it's gonna be even better. There's also other leak mechanics and we um, even didn't see most of them. There are like, you know, abyss leak, uh, maybe talisman, everyone's least favorite, you know. <laughs> But yeah, there are lots of leaks that they didn't even uh, show, so we will see. So one thing that I noticed is this um, torment leak. Actually, you know the ghosts. They are most of the time meh. You know what the fuck are these? But uh, they already said it in the video that uh, you can actually combo this with the sextant. So I believe it is true, and I hope because otherwise this is just useless. Uh, if you are not familiar with the sextants, uh, there is a sextant sometimes that you can get, and uh, there are three different. Uh, uh, three different <coughs> three different uh, I'm sorry I should drink some water fast so yeah there are three different sextant mobs actually about torment leak and they are like uh, unique uh, drops and the leak specific unique actually so if the ghost um, enters in a rare or maybe unique monster it will drop a leak specific item it can even be a headhunter so there is actually a sextant like that and also same goes for some uh, another ghost uh, yeah, that gives uh, maps and also one last ghost uh, scarabs yeah so if you can get that sextant and use it in lex proxima with this um, passive whatever 20 rare monsters but it says up to 20 so it can maybe be only one rare or maybe even be 10 or 20 ultimately so I believe all of the, those ghosts will be that sextant so if that is the case it will be absolutely broken but Chris already said that in the video that you can um, combine it with the sextant, so we will see. If that is true, this is gonna be absolutely broken. So, um, yeah, we are gonna abuse it. And maybe hopefully we will get a headhunter or something, yeah? So this is gonna be absolutely broken, so heads up. Uh, what else, Nico? Let's just continue. So they are showing some uh, watchstones actually. So if you are not familiar here, there are some unique watchstones that you can get from Sirius himself. But they have some usage, you know, consumption, 15 charges or whatever. But there are actually some new watchstones that are a replacement to the original four colored versions. And these are also unlimited. And they have some little bonuses and I believe you can also craft these with alteration orbs. So these are like flasks. They cannot be rare, so it means yellow. So eventually... Our whole atlas uh, will be, you know, covered with these, I believe. So it says some legion encounters in areas have 26% increased chance to include a market army. So market uh, splinters are usually the most expensive. 3% increased effect of modifiers on non-unique maps. This is uh, good for, obviously, uh, yeah. So there are going to be lots of stuff. Uh, they are not even on the video. So we, we just need to play and see. So uh, the thing we just talked about, you know, I said that maybe I will farm legion, you know. Uh, you can actually uh, probably mean to min max uh, you should uh, craft some watchstones with uh, legion probably and use also those on that region to even buff those legion encounters more so the profits are gonna be insane this leak so mapping uh, is gonna be still one of the best um, currency farming methods of all time yeah so what else? Yeah, Maven Orb. So you can get this from Maven herself, um, as far as I understood. So this is something for only the top-notch crafty, crafting players to use, I believe. So it's re so let's say um, so you need an influenced item first. It needs to have at least two, I believe, or maybe only two. I'm not sure, but at least two, as far as I know, influenced modifiers. And then once you use the Maven Orb, it will delete uh, one of that mod and then upgrade the other one. If that other one, the remaining one, is already a tier 1, you know, the highest tier, it will um, get a new modifier, a bonus. And I believe it is only a 1 a prefix or suffix, whatever, so it will be a combined 1 mod. So that item will eventually have 1 less uh, mod, because you just deleted one. So you can actually slam or maybe bench, bench craft something on it and finish the craft later. The thing about, you know, this is uh, the unclear... Um, we don't know what to get once you use the Maven Orb, as far as I know, because uh, they got plus intelligence gems. Uh, what? Wrong button. So they got plus intelligence gems after the slam, as you can see. 
but let's say if my chest has explosion, you know, and maybe some maximum mana, let's say, if I delete that mana and only explode remains, what happens next? You know, am I gonna get physical gems or something like that? I'm not sure. Uh, no one knows, I believe, so we will see. Uh, we need those crafting results to use this Maven Orb because it can be very expensive. Uh, we, we, uh, we don't know, so we will just see. So this is probably for the top-notch um, top players, you know, top crafters, or maybe if you want to truly burn your currency after a while. So yeah, we will see. Uh, interesting stuff. So new maps, they, they all have um, POE2 layouts, I believe, so the graphics are way better. So some new cool bosses, so let's continue. So what is this? So Ritual League, yes, this is the league. Um, so you obviously want to play in league, obviously. Um, I don't recommend playing standard to anyone. League is uh, all about the fun, you know. So as far as I understand, uh, you will encounter a ritual obelisk in a map and then you will kill lots of monsters um, and it will also count your um, points on the bottom I believe and then you will um, use those points to buy stuff from the obelisks, let's see. So yeah, there are lots of items here and you, you will see that it ha he has, you know, the player, uh, 1000 blah blah tributes remaining so you can just spend it. Um, if you want to buy something from here and maybe you don't have that current tribute, you can actually save it for later and buy it later. So that's actually very nice, so you cannot actually miss some valuable stuff. Maybe you will find a headhunter or maybe exalt dwarf, something like that. So you can actually save that and buy later, so that's very good and very big thanks to the GGG for, you know, thinking that. Um, that's very good. So yeah, this is just a mini event in a map, so you won't waste that much time because it is not a um, side content leak like Heist or maybe Synthetize. Those are probably the worst uh, leaks of all times, you know, people hated those. So yeah, this is gonna be an in-map leak, so yeah, these are better in my opinion, I enjoy most. So as you can see, you can even get 4 Exalt Orbs, which I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm sure that I will probably get 4 Chaos. And people in Reddit are gonna post everywhere like exalts mirrors, and I'm just gonna like, what the fuck? I am just unlucky. So yeah. So interesting league, and also some new uh, base types. Um, so this helmet is actually looks very good on a champion, obviously, but you can also use it on any other kind of build with fortify. Uh, crushed means that you will take, uh, you will have 15% less physical um, mitigation, I believe, something like that. But with enough fortify effect and armor, you can actually negate that probably. Um, yeah, this can be a very powerful helm. And if you can also use um, Crusader Orb on this, and I believe you can. Because this is just a normal base type, so you can probably craft this. And even maybe put additional fortify effect thanks to Crusader influence. So you can craft some insane helmets and even buff that fortify effect more. So this helmet is probably uh, the best out of these three items. I'm not sure about those boots. Uh, very interesting mechanics and I also don't know much about that gloves, I'm not sure. 30% reduced mana, uh, blah blah blah, just you can read it later, I'm not sure if that's good or not, yeah. But that helmet um, looks really nice. You can actually um, deposit, you know, what's that, uh, take a vial or something of the obelisk and use it in a map to even make it harder, something like that. So we are gonna see, uh, very interesting and yeah, seems good. Better than Heist, I believe. <laughs> I hope so. So let's continue. So yeah, the Ascendances changes. Uh, they said that they will make lots of changes, numeric changes at least to most of the Ascendances. But the most notable ones um, are Elementalist, Deadeye and Inquisitor. These are, if you are not that familiar, let's see. Let's go to PoE Ninja real quick. Builds. So let's check the heist. As you can see, the Inquisitor is the least played um, ascendancy, and it is most of the time at the bottom three, let's say. Um, that is actually here because probably most people play it with a support for farm, maybe. Actually, if you want to play solo, it will probably be here, something like this. So yeah, this is probably because people play it in party. And Elemental is actually popular these days because of Golem builds, and if uh, the Golem builds got nerfed or something like that, it won't actually be at top 5, but thanks to maybe these new changes, um, she can be a 
more versatile uh, character. For Elementalist, let's see. Triggers level 20, Primal Aegis when allocated, and that also gets 100 damage per allocated notable passive skill. I believe this means your talent tree, in my, uh, as far as I understood, um, I'm not sure. So maybe the higher your level, the higher the uh, absorption will be, something like that. Uh, you cannot use other Aegis skills, and uh, there are actually some shields. Um, I'm not sure about the names right now, but there are actually some couple of shields, like three or four of those, I believe, and they also give some. Uh, damage absorption shields, a cold one, uh, fire. You can actually get that those two from the Moon Temple unique map. So you can maybe check those. I'm not sure about the name because yeah. So yeah, you cannot use those. Uh, you, you should use that only the um, elementalists. Uh, Aegis, yeah. So this is just for some defense actually, I believe, and also some reflect damage. But we need to read the description of the primal Aegis in game once it is live. So we will see if it gives anything more. So I believe the golem nodes are um, same, but the only big change is that summoned golems are resummoned 4 seconds after being killed. This is actually very huge, because if you want to use uh, play elementalist other than uh, being a golem build, you know, maybe you want to play a burning arrow, maybe a blade vortex, or maybe elemental hit, something like that, uh, you probably need to invest in these um, golem nodes because they give some effects. Uh, damage, ailment, immunity, those kind of stuff, but eventually on hard maps uh, your golem just dies all the time because you are not a minion build, uh, you cannot actually protect them, whatever. So this is actually a very big change, so most people can actually play elementalist now for other builds, yeah. So what else? So these are all new, I believe. Uh, all of them are for different um, elements. So yeah, they are they look you know interesting. So we will see. So lots of other buffs also. And finally, this also looks very good, especially for mapping and also both bossing, because this gives 60% increased array of effect while you don't have convergence. And convergence is something that you get once you hit a unique enemy. So it means a boss, a beyond boss, something like that. So if you hit a boss, you will get some damage. If you don't hit a boss, you will get insane area of effect. So this is very good for maybe something like Blade Vortex or maybe any other kind of area skill. So this actually looks very good, so we will see. So Elementalist is probably uh, worth a try in 3.13, so let me know what you think. So Inquisitor, this is very interesting actually. This is probably the first time a character can be played as both a melee and also spell combined, so, so we will see. So first of all, uh, the Consecrated Ground stuff actually changed a little. Um, previously it gave something like 200 energy shield regeneration. Now it also applies the regeneration, life regeneration to uh, energy shield. So that is um, interesting. You can actually play hybrid builds uh, as far as I understood. So interesting, but uh, they removed that attack speed, so a little less DPS it seems. But we will see. And uh, Consecrated Ground, you create, applies 15% increased damage taken to enemies. This was like 10%, I believe, so actually they buffed this. So yeah, it sh should be a buff overall if I don't uh, miss anything. Uh, what else? Yeah, so this got reworked. I don't think... I'm not sure if this is a buff or not. This um, seems interesting, but maybe the previous version was better. I'm not sure, because you have to uh, go for some intellect or strength to benefit from this. Uh, previously, it gave like 100% crit chance to um, non-ailment mo monster, something like that, and 45%, I believe, crit multiplier. And that was actually better, probably, but we will see. I'm not sure. Uh, depending on how you can, you know, stack that strength or intelligence, whatever. So this is what is new. Uh, that left side was originally uh, pretty much shit. You know, nobody used thought that. Uh, the last time I remember that people played with it was like three years ago, maybe <laughs> before 2.0 leak, something like that. So now it gives some decent, uh, but uh, interesting stuff. Yeah, Battle Mage, 10% uh, more attack damage for each non-instant spell you have cast in the past eight seconds, up to a maximum of 30%. So this means that you need to play with a both attack and a both spell, maybe two separate six links or maybe a five link helmet, something like that, on a shaper base, maybe elder base, you know. So different play style, actually, uh, very interesting. You will also get added spell damage equal to the damage of your main hand weapon. So your weapon should deal some significant and uh, good damage, you know. 
and it will also get added to the spell so very interesting and finally instruments of zeal uh what's where's that where's that uh, gain one fanatic charge every second if you have attacked in the past second lose all fanatic charges on reaching maximum fanatic charges so it says that fanaticism whatever grant spells you cast yourself 75 percent more cast speed uh, reduce mana cost and increase area of effect so definitely interesting and we will see how this goes maybe i will make a build in the league but not as a league starter probably so probably everyone's most um what's that the most curious one let's say uh, i couldn't find the word you understood probably so most people are pretty much looking for a way to play a um, good archer these days i actually uh, played lightning arrow and galvanic arrow in 3.12 and it is probably the most recent uh, build on the whole internet let's say because most people don't even play archer these days but i played it it was decent uh, more than 10 million dps uh, around 6k life able to face tank minotaur those kind of bosses obviously it is not a cheap build but it is between medium and high budget you know uh, so you need some investment obviously because archer builds are usually not that um, cheap especially the elemental ones yeah so if th is this a buff or not so i actually um, calculated those maybe some numbers are a little off but you will uh, have some idea yeah so first let's look at take a look at the ascendancy then i will show you the results that i calculated so far shot this usually um this used to give some projectile speed but they removed it and as far as i can see they actually buffed far shot because uh, you can now get what's that 20 percent less damage to the targets at the start and it used to have i believe no penalty um, if i'm wrong please uh, leave a comment uh, but now it gives 60 percent more damage to targets as the projectile travels farther so i believe it was less maybe like 40 percent something like that i believe this is a buff for you know range uh, long range build, let's say but the interesting about part about this is actually projectile barrages have no spread so they actually want you to play with barrage support and shoot from like maybe 20 30 yard away so i'm not sure if that's gonna be possible very interesting um, we should definitely try and see how it goes but yeah very interesting synergy but probably you won't get far shot anymore because it also is in a different position so this is completely a different play style i'm not sure if i'm gonna play with this or not so we will see um let's continue so ricochet skill chain plus one time okay good uh, nothing has changed but the thing about this now projectiles have 30 percent chance to be able to chain when colliding with terrain so it can actually bounce off from the ground or something like that so probably better for clear but the um, sad part about this this used to give 10 percent more damage to projectiles for each remaining chain so because you get um, plus one chain even a barrage or whatever your single target is is gonna chain one times but if you are attacking a boss a big target obviously uh, that's gonna be your first target so you are not gonna get um, so the uh, projectile is counted um, as not chained to the first first hit yeah so you will benefit from that tempers and more damage all the time so because they changed this actually your single target got nerfed right now but we are gonna also check the other notables so we will see how it performs so i will continue and there is actually one more thing i'm not sure if i should tell it so let's just take, tell it yeah so because they remove that 10 percent more damage for each remaining chain if uh, we need to see the patch notes first because that's why i hesitated here to mention it or not there is actually a cobra lash build uh, that i made in 3.12 and there was like five people on the entire world who plays that all right so that's something that nobody knows actually the guide is in my channel <clears throat> i was like rank one or rank two something like that in high sleek um, because that they changed this um, chain ricochet whatever that build is actually no longer possible they just killed the build and we will see that in the patch notes because they said that we buffed rework whatever 40 different skill gems or something like that if they added that chain damage bonus in cobra lash's own kit the build is still the same but if they didn't edit if they forgot it the build is basically dead right now and it is not even a meta build no one plays it all right 
So yeah, very sad if they don't uh, fix it. I hope, yeah, we will see. So that's actually a very big nerf to Cobra Lash. Uh, skills fired through additional projectile. This was one projectile, but it also gave um, some accuracy. So if you can cap your accuracy, that's not uh, actually important, but it also gave some area of effect. So it can be good for some skills, but eventually this now gives more boss damage. Also, it improves your clear speed, obviously. But for barrage or galvanic arrow, whatever you play, you will actually deal more single target damage now. So this actually negates a little bit of that previous chain more damage stuff. So, so far the build seems um, same, you know, archer builds, but let's continue. I will also show you the final uh, comparison. So this is something new, uh, Mirage Archers are not attached to you, plus two maximum number of summoned Mirage Archers. Cannot summon Mirage Archers while near your Mirage Archers. So this Mirage Archer is something that uh, is on your um, head, you know, on your back, summons, you know, and it attacks uh, at a um, basic attack speed, you know, depending on your attack speed, as far as I know. So it just helps you with your clear a little. Also, it is good for toxic rain builds, I believe, because your toxic rains can actually stack. So yeah, it has some synergy um, on both cases, both um, single target or uh, clear, depending on your skill. So now it won't get attached to you, so it will actually be like a minion maybe, but you cannot actually summon um, them close enough. I believe so I'm not sure it is also very um, new interesting we will see so I cannot say much about this so the final ones so this is the tailwind um, uh, actually now you can get tailwind all the time it is like a passive now uh, but if you attack what's that yeah each instance of gale force last four seconds maximum 10 action speed blah 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 so whenever you use a skill, you will get a stacking buff, and this is actually the same pretty much, but I believe this is also buffed. So I will uh, also put a picture on the screen so you can um, compare those. So I believe this is a little buff, this is a this is better than the previous one as far as I um, remember, because I checked it yesterday. Uh, it was something like that, yeah, so this is a buff. So Wind Ward, this is actually very good, but at the cost of, uh, let's, let's just read. 3% less damage taken per Gale Force. So Gale Force is something that you can stack up to 10 stacks. So if you can attack 10 times before getting hit, so you'll have 10 stacks. And if you got hit, you will take 30% less damage for that only one hit, I believe, because then you will lose all the Gale Force. This also means that you will lose all that damage buff. So this is actually something for pretty much hardcore players, or if you are pushing level 100, something like that, or maybe Delirious maps. So this is just for some extra damage mitigation, but for DPS, uh, this actually provides nothing. This actually lowers your DPS, yeah. So if you want to be tankier, go for this. If you don't, if you want more DPS, don't get this, probably. And also, if you get this, you won't have points left for anything else, because there is one last thing that gives a lot of DPS, and now we are going to take a look at that. Uh, not this, after this, yeah. So Rupturing, Crit Strikes, which inflict bleeding, also inflict Rupture. So Rupture is a new debuff, I believe. Rupture targets take 25% and more damage from bleed. Bleed on them expires more quicker. So this is for maybe bleed builds. Um, maybe you can play Deadeye Bleed now, I'm not sure. We will see. So this is also interesting. And finally, Focal Point, what's that? Is that Focal? This, this is uh, the first time I <laughs> see something like that. I'm not. I don't even know what that word means. Yeah, I believe it is focal. Whatever. <laughs> so it says 75% increase effect of your mark. So this is actually a very big DPS buff. This actually gives more than a million DPS. So this is something that you need to get if you want that uh, DPS. So if you get this, you do, you won't have any point left for that uh, final ward stuff for defense, you know. Because you want to get chain, obviously. And then, uh, what's this, plus two projectiles for single target and also some map clear, you know. And then tailwind. And you will have one last point. If you want to be more tankier, you will get this ward. But if you want that DPS, you will get this focal point. Because you obviously want to use Sniper Mark as a mark choice, that is the best in slot, you know, the best curse skill, the mark uh, uh, for 
uh, projectile builds because it provides about 2 million DPS on a 10 million DPS build. So it is absolutely broken. So with this it will provide even more DPS like maybe 1 million extra. And that also has some other uh, benefits but they are not very important I believe because you want to cast this on a boss obviously. So yeah. So I will put that uh, calculation somewhere uh, on the screen. So if you also get this, this is actually a buff for Dead Eyes. So the conclusion now, all right. So if you also get this, Dead Eye is actually got buffed. But if you want to be tankier and chose to get this, let's check the name again, Wind Ward for more defense, you will actually lose DPS. So it is not a buff for a Dead Eye. So again, the sad story about the previous Dead Eye because she was squish, squish, you know. She didn't provide that much defense. Um, actually, wait a second. She also lost all that evasion, I believe. What the fuck? I just realized that uh, Tailwind used to give some evasion, I believe. And now they also removed that. <sighs> GG really don't know how to buff that, you know. So this is, I believe, not that of a buff. Alright, conclusion. If you want more DPS, actually now she has more DPS, alright, thanks to this focal point plus one additional arrow. But she lost that also little evasion and also if you want to get all of these, you will also you won't also get this wind ward. So again a squishy one shot character, uh, kill or be killed. But if you get if you, uh, if you can stack some evasion, uh, dodge, you know, blind, you can actually uh, survive most of the cases, you know, uh, face tank minotaur. Just check my guide if you want, uh, check my um, archer guide, but eventually she is again squishy, not that tanky, you know, yeah. So ultimately I'm not sure if this is a good buff or not, I believe it is somewhere between, you know, better DPS, but still no actual survival ability, so not of a big buff in my opinion, she still sucks. Uh, some numeric changes, uh, we didn't see most of those, but the most obvious one is Occultist. So this is actually a buff for Occultist, I actually played Occultist Essence Strain and also Trickster and compared the two, but people probably don't play much Essence Strain these days because obviously new players, uh, they just try Essence Strain and they cannot kill bosses because they don't know how to progress and then they just stop playing Essence Strain, yeah. Uh, it happened to most of my friends, most of the new players I see and talk on the chat, on my Discord, whatever. So Essence Rain is something... So yeah, obviously there are more cast skills, but Essence Rain is probably the most um, reliable one. So I am giving examples of that. So that's why Occultist isn't that popular these days, but I played it. Uh, there's obviously more skills that you can play with Occultist. But because I will mention... Because I just played Essence Rain this league, I will mention that, yeah. So... The most obvious change is, uh, where's that, if I can see it, what the fuck, I cannot see it, what the fuck, oh yeah, 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 Withering Present, 15% more chaos damage, so this used to give some damage over time multiplier, I'm not sure if this is better or not, I didn't calculate it actually, so this is some interesting change, we need to calculate it, uh, so yeah, and the actual big buff in my opinion is this part, the left part, uh, it used to be, uh, what's, what was this, Profane Bloom, yeah. You had to get Profane Bloom, then Malediction, but now they are on separate um, sites, separate branches. So you can actually get Malediction directly, so this is actually a very big buff to Occultist. Because Profane Bloom in Essence Strain, most of the time, you know, uh, if I want to give a good example, is basically useless. Uh, that only hexproof stuff works, but that explosion isn't that important actually because Essence Strain already has a godlike clear. So if I want to compare the previous Occultist and the new one uh, for Essence Strain Blight builds, this is actually a very big buff overall for Occultist and she is now even better than Trickster. She already has a little bit more DPS, but now she probably outclassed um, in DPS. So she is a better choice for um, Essence Strain. Uh, she's probably gonna be played a lot more in 3.13 because you can also get malediction now uh, Maledicted targets, you know take um, increased damage and also additional curse. So maybe you can use a Defensive curse. I'm not sure. So yeah, she will uh, have more DPS compared to trickster So sounds promising Let's see if there's anything left. 
So there are some new skills. I'm not going to talk about those. Uh, you can just watch uh, because I, I didn't play with those. You know, I cannot say much. So interesting stuff. So this actually looks interesting, but I'm not sure what uh, where we can use this. Where is it? So Trinity support. So this is actually a new play style. I believe you need to play with different elements. So if this works with elemental hit, maybe it will you know create some new build ideas. So the first thing I thought. Uh, myself, you know, with my friends, is the elemental it, yeah. So maybe now you can play elemental it with um, more than one element because playing a fire converted um, avatar of fire um, elemental it is the best these days, and it also was the best all the time, you know, every time. But yeah, maybe you can now play with three separate elements or something like that. Or if you have any other good options, um, just leave a comment down. So some new uniques uh, I will. I won't talk about this, you know, because I don't, I didn't try those, yeah, you can just read. So one last thing about, you know, Harvest, I believe, and that will be, yeah. So Harvest 3.11 League, if you didn't play it, it was a very broken, absurd League, alright. You could easily craft godlike items, mirror tier items, so they were not even mirror tiered anymore because everyone could craft those. So yeah, uh, it was like basically... You play with a cheat activated, you know, like a god mode, something like that. Um, so yeah, you could craft insane items, but uh, they reworked the whole process. Now the gardens are, um, and what's that? Randomly generated, I believe. So you just find harvest in map with some maybe 10% chance, something like that. So as you can see, you find it, you enter it, and there will be a <coughs> set of, you know, um, garden. And you can choose some seeds depending on what you want. As you can see, there are some options. And if you want to, you know, if you want some attack crafts, maybe you will click this or something like that, probably. And then you will kill and do your craft. And there is also 10 deposit uh, stuff. Uh, what's that? Horticraft, craft, I believe. But only 10 slots, if I um, heard right. It seems actually very low. I'm not sure. But also one last thing about harvest. Uh, the most obvious, you know, craft methods uh, was, you know, Tailwind Boots, Elusive Boots, if you remember. I believe they all got nerfed because they won't have that critical tag anymore, I believe. So you cannot uh, craft Tailwind Boots anymore, as far as I know. Because uh, if you can, what's the point of, you know, uh, converting this to core game? Because it's, it's gonna be a, um, broken again, yeah? So yeah, they probably reworked, balanced some craft options, we will see. But this probably saves you more time now, because you will just find it, do it, and just get on with it. You know, you won't, you don't need to set up your uh, garden or whatever. There is not even seeds anymore, I believe, yeah. So this will uh, probably uh, be a faster gameplay, yeah, provides a faster gameplay. So I believe this is it, Heist is also going core. Well. <laughs> No, uh, I'm not even excited, you know, I'm probably not gonna do it. The Heist is probably my least favorite league of all time, after Propecy maybe. Propecy league was also shit, if you played it maybe like 4 years ago. So yeah, that's about it. If you have any um, comments, or you know, what's that? Uh, I'm, yeah, I couldn't find the correct, but I'm tired guys. <laughs> I should have probably take a break, but yeah. So thanks for watching and please leave a comment down below and yeah, I will see you later.